Hello, everyone. It's a really a pleasure uh, meeting you all up here. And thank you for your great presentation before me. It's, it's, it's a high standard, so I'll try to keep it up. So today I'm going to talk about uh, design systems, uh, design systems in general, and how to implement a design system specifically in Flutter. You'll see why Flutter. But uh, first of all, a little bit about me. By the way, just a little bit of introduction before we start. Actually, what I'm showing you now, it's, uh, it's not a PowerPoint or any kind of presentation. Actually, all of this is a Flutter application that I have created specifically for the presentation. So the whole presentation is actually an application, which you're going to see. It has a little bit more of interactivity. So let's go on. A little bit about myself. Um, I have been doing software engineering for around 11 years now, professionally. And I have been mostly focused on mobile development with Android and in the last three, four years with Flutter as well. Um, one year ago, I have uh, co-founded Creotech Group, uh, a mobile first agency. Uh, we focus on startups, help them create their initial phases of the applications, and then help them being successful. Um, a part of that, um, we have also co-founded Flutter BG, which is uh, the first mobile Flutter community in Bulgaria. Uh, it has been alive for around two years, I believe, now. Uh, it has quite a few members. And we're working closely with Google Developer Group Bulgaria. So we are having quite often also presentations with them. Um, keep tuned. So I believe that in October, we're going to have another one. But enough is enough. Enough for me. Let's talk about what is actually a design system. A design system is, is, is a really simple thing, actually. It's just a set of standards that companies follow in order to create uh, their brands when developing their products. Following those standards, they create a certain set of components, and those components are used throughout the whole ecosystem of all the products. It, it can be a mobile applications, it can be web applications, desktop applications, it really doesn't matter. But following those standards and components, the, you can feel that you have uh, an one entity for the, whole, for the whole company. And I believe that uh, the most important thing about using a design system and having it in your company is actually being consistent. Because when you open the application on a mobile phone, when you open the website, when you open the desktop app, it needs to feel as one, not as different buttons, different text, and so on. I believe we are all aware of maybe two of the most important, two of the most famous design systems ever created in the recent years. And this is the material design system. And of, of course, the iOS version, the human interface guidelines. But why are not the companies using only those? Because if you, if you only use material design or human interface guidelines, all of the applications, they will look the same, which is sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But if you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to implement something different, something custom for your company, right? And there are lots of examples about that. For instance, Airbnb, Spotify, Shopify, lots of examples. If you just implement your application with material design, it's going to look like 2,000 others, not 2,000, 2 million other applications. And the customers are probably not going to work with you because you're like everyone else. So you need something custom. But building something custom is actually a really, really difficult task, believe me. You need a dedicated team, not one, team, of designers. And this design team is going to put a lot of efforts, resources, and time in creating the design system. Once created the design system, however, what happens? It needs to be translated. Oops. Sorry. Uh, once created the design system, it needs to be translated into the framework and the technologies that the engineers are going to use when creating the actual product. Which means, if you have a web application, an Android application, an iOS application, what you need to do is actually create this design system in different languages, in Swift, Kotlin, for instance, and React, for all of the three different products, right? Well, this is quite a difficult task, even more difficult than creating the design system itself. And it's going, it's going to have lots of issues with maintainability and scalability. And it's going to be like time-consuming task to just change one button for all the three platforms. And this is why, actually, we have started 
uh, with all the design systems in Flutter. Why Flutter? So, for those who are not really aware of what is Flutter, Flutter is a technology developed by Google. And this technology is a cross-platform te technology, similar to other cross-platform technologies that are already existing, like React Native, Cordova, I wouldn't suggest, and some others. But um, Flutter can run on iOS, Android, web, macOS. As you can see, this is a Flutter app on macOS. Uh, Linux, Windows, and I believe, yeah, these are the, the main ones. And why, why is this important? Because what you can do is actually implement the design system only once, and it can work simultaneously without, without any issues. I assure you, I have, we have implemented lots of applications using design systems for all of the three main platforms. So I think it's a no-brainer why implementing a design system using a hybrid technology, no matter it's Flutter or something else, it's something that we should aim for. But, but how do we implement actually the design system? There are different methodologies of implement, implementing the design system. Most likely, the most famous one is the atomic design system, or the atomic design methodology. Atomic design methodology was created by one really, really good and scalable designer, Brad Frost, with the idea that actually the UI, when implementing a user interface in different products, is coherent to um, chemistry. What does it mean? Well, let's go back to school. So in chemistry, you have atoms. In chemistry, you have molecules. In chemistry, you have organisms, right? And what is the idea? That you have the, the smallest parts that build everything else. Let's not get into details about this. Let's just assume that the smallest parts are atoms. The atoms, they combine into different molecules, right? The different molecules, then they, they have another capabilities because of the different uh, set of atoms that build them. Then those molecules, they go into organisms. Well, it's the same with UI. You're going to see how. However, in design systems, in the design system by, implemented by Brad, there are also two, set, two other sets, which are the templates and the pages. Obviously, we don't have templates and pages in chemistry. Let's go with atoms, eventually. Atoms. So what are the atoms? Atoms, we can, we can, we can think of those as Lego blocks. Can you, can you break, break a Lego block? No. The Lego block is the smallest part that, build, that builds other things, right? So basically, these are the atoms. And how do we implement atoms in the design systems? Actually, what are the atoms first in the design system implemented by us in Flutter? Well, obviously, the atoms are the smallest parts. You cannot break them anymore. So this can be colors, typography, dimensions, and icons. So let's move on to colors. Um, let's not focus that much on the code that is here. Um, the idea behind the code is actually to implement what is on the right. And this is, OK, this is not a scrollable list. It's just four cards, never mind. But the basic idea <coughs> is that the colors are the first set of atoms. So you can have, for instance, a background color, a title color, title stress color, a caption color. What is important to be noticed here is that you have a design system colors for light theme. Also, you have design system colors for a dark theme. And why is this important? Because now, if I go to my system settings, display, and I click dark mode, I get this. And actually, as you can see, the whole application instantly without restart, without anything, with just this code, changes the colors of the set of components and actually the whole application like this. Just want to mention something before we continue. There are lots of ways to implement design systems, and this is the most, the most basic ones. There are lots of plugins, set of tools, and libraries that you can use to implement design systems. This is just the idea, the abstraction behind what is a design system, how to implement it programmatically. So let's go on with the next one. The next atom is typography. We can think of typography as a set of styles. 
So for instance, we have title, h4, title, h5, title, h6, body, caption. It's, it's a little bit difficult to scroll and in the other direction. OK, I can scroll now. And you can set also, uh, really easy, a set of classes that represent those styles. So you can have a class, design title, h4, that you can use afterwards. And you can see how. You can go like this. And actually, this class, typography example that I have created, is representing what you have on the right. So for instance, you have title H4, which we can see is typography title H4. This is the style. If I click this, actually this is title H4. Then you have title H5. This is title H5. Title H6, body, and caption. So these are uh, typography is the second step when creating the atoms in your design system. And it's the thing here is that actually it gets quite easy when you start working real time with your uh, designer. Because most likely when you're implementing a product, you're going to have the designs ready in Figma or any other tool. So on Figma, you're going to see, when you see the screen, you're going to see, OK, this text is title H4. So what does the programmer do? It's actually he goes to the design system that he has implemented. He grabs title H4 and puts it on the screen. And it's just that. You don't have to replicate. You don't have to uh, write new code or anything else. So it's really easy. It's just like um, combining a set of blocks when creating a new screen, which is really important, especially when the time to market is an important factor. Because you don't have to put much effort when creating a new screen, you don't have to put much details in when, in when writing the user stories. You can just say, I need this text, this text, this text. The designer says, OK, this title, this title, this title, and that's it. So let's move to dimensions. Dimensions are also quite important thing, especially when the team is not working only with, let's say, senior engineers. But even with seniors, it also uh, gets some issues from time to time. Dimensions, why are they so important? Well, I want to stay on this screen here. Because you don't have to put numbers in your code. Why putting numbers in your code is bad? Because you hard code values. And hard coding values gets really, really a big issue when you want to make a change. Because let's say the designer says, OK, I want this button to be um, 20 pixels long now. But then after two weeks, when you have implemented this button in 20 different places, and the designer says, OK, I want this button to be 30 pixels long. Well, you have to go to these places and change it manually. But having some kind of an abstraction like this, so for instance, uh, you can have a size of none. You can have a size of XXS, XS, small, medium, large. It gets quite easy. Because once the designer says, now XS is not four pixels, pixels long, but it's eight pixels long. You just change one value. And because you have used access everywhere in the application, it just works automatically. And for instance, on the right, I have this example, where I have a, a few containers here with different paddings. So I have a padding dimensions all, which means all sides, with a size of XS. So you can see that actually this is XS. We have dimensions only on the left, excess. So it's, it's that easy to actually use those atoms for dimensions to actually build the sizings in your application. The next thing is icons. Well, icons are quite an important thing, of course. And icons in footer can be quite easily implemented using a few libraries, actually. And you can use icons as actually as a font. And it's um, actually really perform performance-wise, it's really nice. And if you, if you have been using Flutter, um, not sure who, whoever has, if you have been using Flutter, you, you know that actually the icons that are provided by Google, all the material icons, they're implemented as fonts. So you can have custom icons as a font, custom font in your application. So these are the next set of um, atoms that you can use in your application. Okay. 
Now let's move to the molecules. We have gone through the, all the atoms. So what are actually the molecules? The molecules is, uh, I think you have actually already got the idea. It's actually combining all the atoms that we have went through, the typography, dimensions, and so on, to combine, uh, to create an element and that have uh, new features based on all the atoms that are creating it. So, for instance, this is my dog. <laughs> yeah, he's sleeping. And um, the whole screen is actually uh, something like um, Instagram, Instagram like uh, post. But we can look at the screen in more narrowly in the different aspects of the screen. So for instance, the topmost part can be a molecule. Why is it molecule? Because you have a three uh, atoms that are creating it. You have an icon, you have a text, you have another text, and the, those texts, they have some colors, and that's it. Then you have another molecule with a set of icons, and the third molecule, which is again a set of icons. One element, another text, another text. Let's focus now on the first uh, molecule that we have, so we can see how we can build it, actually. Building it is actually quite an easy task. Building it is by, defined, by having already defined all the atoms in your applications. You can have just one element, which is the icon. We, you can have um, design caption element. Design caption is just the class that I have created previously, with a, which is with a style caption for the text style. And then you can have another design caption um, class, which is just the follow text. And having this, it's literally like building Lego blocks. You put this, this, and this, and you get this. And, it, and it's that easy. And if you want to make a change throughout the whole application, you actually don't change the actual page. You don't change this molecule. You change only the design caption. And the design caption may change its style, which is absolutely fine, and it's going to work automatically throughout the whole application. Now, organisms, actually, like the next level, is just the set of molecules. And an uh, organism is created by molecules. So let's see again this, my quid doc, the, the, sim the similar page. However, now it is a bit more complicated because we have one organism. Why is this an organism though? Because you have an icon and a text, but this is just a molecule. And you have a set of molecules combined into one organism, which can live on its own. These are the Instagram stories, I believe. Then you have another feed item, I call it, another organism constructed by one molecule, another s s molecule, another molecule, and this cute picture. Then you have a third organism, and this third organism is a, a unified way of navigation. And what are the templates and pages? I have not put any images of my doc on this slide because you have already seen it twice. Uh, the idea behind templates and pages can be uh, described rather easily as thinking about classes in development, in programming, and objects. Basically, if an object is a representation, a specific representation of a class, thus the page is a specific implementation of a template. So for instance, you can have a template of a whole page, which can be then reused in different places of the application. Let's say you have a template for a profile page. But if you don't put any information in that template, a specific profile information, it's just a template. When you put this specific profile information, it becomes a page. So design is fun. Fotter is also fun. And that was it. Yeah.